far in this series, we've learned how to use the marine sextant to measure the angle between the horizon and a celestial body. In this episode, we'll learn about the noon sight for latitude, including terms such as zenith distance and declination. The noon sight for latitude is one of the most historic and useful sights that you can perform. In fact, most of the early explorers relied exclusively on the noon sight. So the general idea behind navigating by noon sights goes something like this. If you were to depart Europe and your destination was the Caribbean, what you would do is you would sail south to the latitude of your destination, turn to the west, and then every day take noon sights, adjusting as necessary until you got close enough to spot land. The practical idea behind the noon sight is that you measure the sun when it's on your meridian. Your meridian is your line of longitude. The measurement of the sun for a noon sight should take place when the sun is due north or due south of you. But the easy way to tell is you just wait until it gets to its highest point in the sky and measure it then. In fact, if you go no further in celestial navigation than learning how to compute your latitude at noon, you can find your way across an ocean. Before we get into the specifics of the noon sight for latitude, there's a couple of theoretical concepts to cover. The first is geographic position. For every celestial object, there's one spot on the Earth directly beneath it. If you were standing in that spot, you would measure the celestial object at 90 degrees above your head, or it would be directly at your zenith. I'm here in the Lee of Dominica, and I'm going to observe the sun at uh, local apparent noon today, because today is a special day. It's March 20th, which is the vernal equinox. That means the sun is directly over the equator at right about now. On the equinox, the sun's geographic position is directly above the equator. The equinox is a great day to demonstrate the concept of zenith distance. Now when we measure something in the sky, we're using the horizon as a zero point and measuring up to the object. However, what we're really interested in is the distance from the spot directly over our head to the object. That distance is called zenith distance. Theoretically, when you use the sextant, you're measuring the angle from the spot directly above your head, or your zenith, to the spot directly beneath any celestial object. Living on a sphere, this angular distance is a real distance in nautical miles. In fact, it's the amount of degrees between you times 60. This concept of zenith distance is one of the most fundamental aspects of celestial navigation theory. It will become crucial to our understanding as we move through the series. Unfortunately, we have no easy way of measuring it with the sextant. So instead, we measure the distance from the horizon to the object and subtract that from 90 to obtain zenith distance. So we've hove to to take the noon sight off the coast of Dominica, and all I'm going to do is measure the distance from the sun to the horizon and do some quick math and we'll have our latitude. In fact, on the equinox, our latitude is equal to zenith distance. So when I measure the sun, I come up with a figure of 74 degrees and 15 minutes of altitude. All I have to do now, since today is the equinox, is subtract that from 90, and I have my latitude. So 90 minus 74, 15, is 15 degrees and 45 minutes. So let's check the GPS and see how close we came. Now that's fine if we only shot local apparent noon on the equinox, but what if we shot one day after the equinox, or one day before the equinox? In that case, we need to learn about declination. So the spot directly beneath any celestial object has a definite latitude. It's some number of degrees above, below, or right on the equator. It's called declination. Declination is simply the latitude of the spot directly beneath any celestial object. In fact, there's another special case of the noon sight for latitude we can talk about, and that's when the sun is directly overhead. It's called Lahaina Noon, and for me, that's today. Today, I measure the sun at 90 degrees above the horizon, which means I'm floating on the spot directly beneath the sun, and its declination is equal to my latitude. The Nautical Almanac is the book which allows us to look up the declination of the sun for any minute of any day of any year. So in the special case when the sun is directly overhead, you simply open the nautical almanac, find the declination of the sun for that time, and that equals your latitude. So far we've talked about a couple of special cases of the noon sight for latitude. One where the sun was directly over the equator on the equinox. Another when we were directly beneath the sun and we measured it exactly overhead. However, you can see there's a bunch of other cases that could happen. 
And in order to get to the core of this, we'll have to cut the Earth in half. Let's use this melon to point out that the equator stretches all the way from the center of the Earth out to the sky. Similarly, your position could be said to represent a line from the core of the Earth outward. But you needn't use the melon every time you need to think about this. In fact, I recommend you draw the relationship between the equator and your ship every time you have one of these problems. Aside from the two special cases we've talked about already, you can draw the relationship between the equator, your ship, and the geographic position of the sun in three ways. In the first case, the sun's geographic position could be in the opposite hemisphere of your ship. In the second case, your ship and the sun's geographic position could be in the same hemisphere, but the sun is closer to the equator. Finally, your ship and the sun's geographic position could be in the same hemisphere, but the sun could be further from the equator than you. In the first case, latitude in red will be equal to zenith distance in green minus declination in blue. In the second case, latitude in red is equal to zenith distance in green plus declination in blue. In the final case, latitude in red is equal to declination in blue minus zenith distance. So to summarize, aside from the two special cases we learned about, there's only three real options for local apparent noon. If you make the drawing every time, you can't go wrong. Before we get into example problems, we need to take a closer look at the nautical almanac. You've already seen how you can pull out a value of declination for a given hour. But typically, observations take place between whole hour measurements. In that case, you must interpolate the value of declination. For our case now, it's typically sufficient to estimate declination to the nearest tenth of a minute. So let's take a look at a couple example problems. All our example problems use the 1981 Nautical Almanac for consistency. In this case, we're near the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, in the Northern Hemisphere. The time is 1800 UTC, and our sextant reads 49 degrees and 15 minutes. The first thing to do is calculate our zenith distance, which we know is 90 degrees minus our sextant height. Using a trick of converting 90 degrees to 89 degrees and 60 minutes makes the math easy. In this case, we come up with 40 degrees and 45 minutes for zenith distance. The second step is to pull your declination from the nautical almanac. In this case, it's south, 17 degrees and 16 minutes. After finding our declination and zenith distance, we create our typical drawing and we realize that we're in the opposite hemisphere from the sun's geographic position. In this case, our latitude is equal to our zenith distance minus our declination. All that's left now is to do the arithmetic to come up with our latitude. In the second example problem, we're further north, near Nova Scotia, Canada, and our time is 1530 UTC. At that time, our sextant reads 53 degrees and 24 decimal 7 minutes. The first step is to calculate zenith distance, again using the trick of 90 degrees being equivalent to 89 degrees and 60 minutes. This yields a zenith distance of 36 degrees and 35 decimal 3 minutes. Looking up our declination, we must interpolate for the value between the hours of 15 and 1600. In this case, our declination is north 8 degrees and 9 decimal 7 minutes. We draw our picture, finding out that the sun is in the same hemisphere but further south, where latitude is equal to zenith distance plus declination. All that's left is to do the arithmetic to come up with the latitude. In our third example problem, we're in the Caribbean Sea, and the time of measurement is 1618 UTC. At that time, our sextant measurement is 86 degrees and 53 decimal 3 minutes. To find our zenith distance, we subtract the sextant height from 90, using our trick of 90 being equal to 89 degrees and 60 minutes, and we come up with a zenith distance of 3 degrees and 6 decimal 7 minutes. To find our declination, we must interpolate. In this case, it's sufficient to estimate that we're 20 minutes into the hour, or one-third of the way through. We come up with a figure of 17 degrees and 8 decimal 7 minutes. After drawing our figure, we'll determine that latitude will be equal to declination minus zenith distance. All that's left is to do the arithmetic and come up with our latitude.
You have to ask yourself about the goal of celestial navigation. If it's to find a Caribbean island, an accuracy of about 15 nautical miles is generally sufficient. Now, so far, we've neglected a few corrections that we could make to become a little bit more accurate. We'll learn about those in lesson three. But for now, it's sufficient to practice your accuracy down to about 15 to 20 nautical miles. So in this episode, we've looked at the noon site for latitude, and we've covered the concepts of zenith, distance, and declination. Refer to the notes below, practice what you've learned in this lesson, and when you're ready, we'll move on.